1 Timothy 3, 14 to 16 today, the midpoint of this letter. And Paul gives his reason for writing the letter. A local church is God's household, a support and foundation for God's truth. And Paul wants us to know that we can only honor and enjoy God by allowing him as father of the family of the household to determine our actions when we gather to worship him and when we scatter to represent him in the world. So listen to this brief but extremely important definition of the church as the household of God built by and in order to support his truth. I hope to come to you soon, but I'm writing these things to you so that if I delay, you may know how one ought to behave in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, a pillar and buttress of the truth. Great indeed, we confess, is the mystery of godliness. He, Jesus, was manifested in the flesh, his incarnation, vindicated by the Spirit. His claims of deity were proven by his resurrection, seen by angels, his ascension to heaven, proclaimed among the nations, the proclamation of the gospel, believed on in the world, the salvation of all who repent of sin and believe in him, and taken up in glory, the final consummation of Christ in glory that his believers, his followers, share in when they too are glorified. God calls his households, local churches, to be built by and for the study and teaching and living out of his truth, his word. That's why elders must be able to teach the word. That's why we'll read soon that elders who labor in preaching and teaching are worthy of double honor, and we cannot hastily appoint unqualified elders, those not able to teach and defend God's truth from God's word. So as God's household, we honor and enjoy him by digging into his word together and allowing him, the living God, uh, the father of the household, to define and direct our lives. Let's stay rooted in the word. Thank you.